Hey guys, how's it going? So I was on a nostalgia kick where I was basically just trying to find, you know, old YouTubers that I used to watch and love. I was really just trying to find, you know, what they're up to now and, you know, figure out if they're still popular or not. Because as you know, and as I know, most channels will simply just die. It's just kind of the process of YouTube. Most channels will just gain so much traction. And the next thing you know, whether that's controversy or, you know, they just lose interest over time, the channel just starts to die out. And sometimes even the fans will start to turn on YouTube YouTubers themselves but today I wanted to talk about a youtuber that I used to watch all of the time and I would look forward to his uploads all of the time this was way back in like the 2011 2012 era of YouTube and so yeah today guys without further ado I wanted to talk about what happened to Kasim G Kasim Gara Bay I don't know if that's actually how you say his name but also better known as Kasim G was born in 1983 he's 36 years old and he's a youtuber who resides in Venice California he's been in many other YouTube videos and featured in other films as well. He created a couple series on YouTube such as Going Deep, Street Music, California On. He was best known for his series California On which basically he just asked Californians you know their certain opinion on certain topics and a lot of the times they would just have really funny results in these topics and he has this certain personality and persona to him where he treats everything serious and he doesn't really show emotion in his face a lot which is I think a big part of his comedy and what makes him really funny now most of the people that he interviewed on California on were really strange people and sometimes gave hilarious responses to just simple topics this is really what brought a lot of attention to his channel and really took his channel to a whole nother level now he also had a series on his channel called going deep which was basically where he interviewed you know adult film stars and basically tried to degrade their confidence and he would basically just roast them which is very simple Similar to today's Eric Andre where he would basically just bring people onto the show and they wouldn't really know exactly what they were doing but he would kind of roast his guests at the same time and he was also part of a YouTube channel station which was called Nacho Punch and that was with other people like Shay Carl and Lisa Nova now in 2009 Kasim actually started a channel called Kasim G2 and there really wasn't a whole lot of differences on the two channels for example in the second channel he uploaded you know other videos that were pretty much related in the same time and in 2011 and 2012 he actually guest hosted the web series equal three which was created by Ray William Johnson another channel that has sadly fallen but was a prime channel of the day and anyone who watched YouTube knew about Ray William Johnson and I think this was honestly a big kick for his own channel which brought a lot of subscribers over to his own channel and in 2009 he actually co-founded Maker Studios along with Shay Butler Danny Zappin and Lisa Donovan and on March 24th 2014 Maker Studios Studios accepted a buyout offer from the Walt Disney Company for $500 million. And as of this upload date, Kasim G has 2.4 million subscribers on his channel with 482 videos. And it's really just interviews and sketch comedy. So most of his most popular videos were around six to nine years ago. And so back then, if anyone else remembers, honestly, if you just posted a girl in the thumbnail, most of the videos would be guaranteed a million views, which is something that YouTube has then worked on and is now definitely not a thing and a major part of his channel was California on comic-con where he would basically go up to random people ask them funny questions and most of the time they would give really strange answers and with his side of sharing no emotion it just really brought this hilarious comedic side to the film itself so in hindsight looking back at the videos now most of the videos were posted with just girls in the thumbnails and this was brought to a lot of attention of most people and most of these videos are at a million views or over and most of the topics that he would talk about would be really lewd and in most cases most people weren't talking about these topics on YouTube in this way and if they were actually in most cases these topics were still monetized which in this case today most of these topics just wouldn't be able to be monetized and for most of the different shows that he had he really kind of showed this beta male personality but also didn't really care what people thought of him and he would wear this you know wolf howling shirt and he just didn't really care what people thought and he would just ask the funniest questions and he wouldn't show any emotion towards 
towards what anyone would do. And if you look at Kasim G2, his most previous video was posted six years ago, so that channel has really completely ended. And looking at his main channel, Kasim G, the last video that he uploaded was two years ago, and it really looked like at this time he was just trying to ride the podcast wave. So to this day, if you look at his Facebook, that's actually down completely. But if you look at his Twitter, he will post occasionally, you know, a couple tweets here and there, but nothing really consistently. And if you look at the last post that he made on Instagram, it was in February 10th, 2020. And the last YouTube video featuring him was in a podcast March 31st, 2020, which only ranked to 2000 views. So my guess would be that he kind of went on retirement mode when he sold Maker Studios. And I'm guessing he kind of burned out of his content and he just got bored of what he was making. That's just what I'm guessing now, but I, I, again, I should preface this with like, I can tell you how I started my YouTube channel, but I definitely can't tell you how to maintain properly man maintain a YouTube channel. And I can't tell you like, <laughs> you know, I can tell you how to walk away from a YouTube channel <laughs> okay. really easily, but how to start one. I, I definitely did that. <laughs> okay. Right? Yeah. And if you were to go to my YouTube channel right now, you'd see like there's a bunch of subscribers, but I think most of them have passed passed away, and they died because oh. because something happened and no and I don't I don't post anymore really. You but when I do, no one and I think if you were gonna take something away from what's happened with YouTube is like it can all change, and you have to like the people that are most successful on the platform are the ones that roll with the changes, like the easiest. Mm -hmm. And you have people like you have people like Shane Dawson who have had like these waves in his YouTube career. Right now, he's like riding high. He's cr he's on the crest of a huge wave. But there are times where things weren't going well, and he's a great example of just like keep doing what you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like people will appreciate that, and they'll stick with you, and they'll see that you're working hard. Me, on the other hand, yeah, just stop, and people will forget <laughs> that you ever made videos. I don't know if I have one right now. I, uh, YouTube has changed so much, um, and I am not the type of person that gets ads put on their video on YouTube, and, uh, and, and they've stripped all the advertising on all my channels. Like, like the only way I really... Me too. Well, I mean, yeah. Me too. Unless you're... <laughs> Oh really? Unless yeah. you're doing toy unboxings or like yeah. you know very family family friendly stuff, it's tough to make. He inspired so many other YouTubers. For example, if you look at Gas No Breaks or others like Joe Goes, I mean, so many other interviewing channels that would just simply you know go to certain places, ask people random questions, and he just inspired so many other people to have this no emotion look, but also just interview people and really have this great comedic and hilarious effect on most of the other videos. So yeah, to this day, he's showing up in occasional podcasts and be featured on a couple random different channels but he's it's nothing really serious and he's not really posting to his main channel anymore so it just kind of sucks to see like a channel get so big and then just kind of die out but honestly from now what we learned is that that's really the case of most youtubers itself and it's really just inevitable i think for typically a lot of channels and looking back at his channel now i think most of the stuff that if he were to upload what he uploaded back then now i think most of it just wouldn't be able to be monetized because it's just not really ad safe and friendly just because of the topics that he talked about and maybe that's something that's stopping him but at the same time he could just start a patreon or maybe just take sponsors and advertisements but anyways that's where custom g is and that's what happened to him it's really just a slow die out of his channel and i'm guessing he just kind of got bored of his content because it was just kind of repetitive and i guess he couldn't really repeat it over time so yeah guys that's actually it for the video today so i want to thank you for watching see you guys later